Before 1975, access to an appropriate education was denied for most students with disabilities. Hundreds of thousands of individuals with severe disabilities were housed in state institutions, and schools only educated approximately one-fifth of students with disabilities. In addition, many states had laws that actually prohibited education in regular schools for students with intellectual disabilities, emotional disturbance, or students who were deaf, blind, or both. Children with disabilities in this time seldom became students. They were characteristically not welcome to the schools. They were, in fact, affirmatively excluded from the schools under laws that required that, that were adopted in the early 20th century by every state legislature in the Union. Those laws followed shortly after statutes in every state creating isolated, distant, segregated institutions, public institutions, to house the disabled as the statutes frequently said, for life. In 1975, Congress enacted the Education for All Handicapped Children Act, Public Law 94-142. This act articulated a compelling national mission to provide a free, appropriate public education for all children with disabilities in the least restrictive environment. Well, it brought to children and then adults with disabilities, all of the glories of a decent equal citizenship. It turned out that people with disabilities, including significant intellectual disabilities, have, like all human beings, enormous capabilities. With those capabilities supported and freed by the schools, their lives have become thoroughly different. By the late 70s, you could see smiles on the faces of family members of children with disabilities. And you could see in schoolyards all over the country, children playing together. People with disability were no longer isolated and hidden. They were among us and with us and participating and contributing. Many now thought to be uneducable uh, 30, 40 years ago now attending college and doing very well, thank you. The Education for All Handicapped Children Act supported states and localities in protecting the rights and meeting the individual needs of students with disabilities. It indicated specific federal mandates to improve how children with disabilities were identified and educated, to evaluate the success of these efforts, and to provide due process protections for children and families. In 1986, Amendments to the Education of All Handicapped Children Act authorized programs for early intervention with infants and toddlers with disabilities. In the 1990s, the law was reauthorized as the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA, reaffirming the requirements for free, appropriate public education and strengthening the law's commitment to greater inclusion in community schools furthering the movement of students with disabilities towards being educated in general education settings. The 1990 amendments also provided for federally sponsored research and supports, which included initiatives for transition services from high school to post-secondary education and adult living for students with disabilities. Without a doubt, the transition services provision in IDEA is one of its most important components. This provision requires all who are working with students with disabilities to take the long view in the planning process with an eye clearly focused on quality of life outcomes. In 1997, amendments to IDEA continued to focus on access. The definition of access, however, was broadened to encompass not just physical access to schools, but also access to the general education curriculum leading to higher academic expectations and greater outcomes for students with disabilities. The focus must be on instruction that uses individualized approaches for accessing the general education curriculum. Schools support learning and high achievement for all, with increasing opportunities for students with disabilities to be educated to the maximum extent possible alongside their non-disabled classmates. 
in 2004, amendments to IDEA increased state and local accountability for educating students with disabilities. There is no pressure on schools to work hard on behalf of students who are excluded from the accountability system. For this reason, it is important that all students, including all students with disabilities, participate in the state accountability system. And for this reason, IDEA now mandates that students with disabilities be included in all state accountability programs. In addition, the 2004 amendments included provisions to ensure that special education personnel are highly qualified to reduce disproportionate representation of minorities in special education and to expand methods for identifying students with specific learning disabilities and school procedures for disciplining students with disabilities. Instructional programming and the amount of supports provided are driven by student needs. IDEA has led to improved access, accountability, and achievement for students with disabilities. As of 2008, 95% of students with disabilities were being educated in local neighborhood schools and almost 6 million students with disabilities were educated in general education classrooms for at least part of the day. Achievement due to IDEA extends beyond K-12 education. For infants and toddlers, the number of children birth to age 5 receiving services under Part C and B of IDEA increased dramatically, and families became part of the planning and education process. Graduation rates for students with disabilities receiving a regular diploma have increased 43% since 1995-96, and since that time, there has been a 24 percentage point decrease in high school dropout rates. Enrollment rates at both two- and four-year colleges have almost doubled for students with disabilities since 1993, and more students with disabilities hold jobs after leaving high school than ever before. One of the most striking facts is that over the past 20 years, there has been marked increases in employment, post-secondary education, and community living measures across all disability groups. Likewise, significant headway is being made in improving academic accomplishments and successes in an environment of heightened standards and expectations. So the progress we've made over the past 40 years is truly remarkable. Improved access, accountability, and achievement for students with disabilities. As classrooms become more inclusive, as technology advances, as research shows us the evidence-based strategies and interventions and instruction that's necessary for kids to be successful in the classroom, states and school districts can truly begin to focus on improving performance and results rather than just compliance with the law. The potential for students with disabilities to pursue college and career has never been greater. And we must celebrate the success and our progress. But we also must recognize that there's more work to be done if we're truly to, to, to realize the, the promise of IDEA. So for example, we know that the IEP must be designed to enable the child to be involved in and make progress in the general curriculum. And that's the same curriculum that applies to non-disabled students. We all know that the IEP is in fact the heart of special education. It provides the students with a, a pathway, with the opportunity to gain the knowledge and the skills that are necessary uh, to meet the standards for the grade in which the child's enrolled. We know that the IEP must reflect the student's disability and the impact that disability has on his or her involvement and progress in the general curriculum. And it must also include the content it must include the annual goals, the specially designed instruction, the supports and the supplementary aids and services that are absolutely necessary for that child to meet the same standards that apply to all kids. It, it, it's really about the opportunity to, to graduate from high school and pursue one's dreams. It's about inclusion and equity and opportunity. That's what IDA is really about and I can't wait for the next 40 years.